Hello and welcome to the Radiate Wellness Podcast with your host, metaphysician, Reiki master, and hypnotherapist, Christy Clemens Hoffman. Each week, we will discover teachings, tips, and tools to radiate your best life ever with practitioners, authors, and luminaries to help you on your path. Wellness, joy, peace, abundance. What do you want to radiate? Hi, and welcome back to the Radiate Wellness Podcast. Today, we radiate interdimensional beings with Margie Kay, who's a return guest that you may remember from episode 79. Margie is the CEO and president of a forensic events investigation company, director of the Oz Interdimensional Communication Institute, and president of Onyx Media and the KUNX Digital Broadcasting Network. Margie is a 40-year veteran, UFO, and paranormal investigator and author serving as the Assistant State Director and Education Coordinator for Missouri MUFON and as Director of the Oz Interdimensional Communication Institute, which I can't wait to talk about. Margie's a licensed private investigator in Missouri and is the author of 14 books with more on the way. She's currently working on two documentary films. And I'm going to stop reading your bio there because, Margie, we will be here all day if I continue through all of the amazing things you do because you're also a, a, a remote viewer and teach remote viewing and work with police on homo- homicides and thefts. Amazing stuff. Welcome. It, thank you. It's great to be here. Good to see you again. Nice to see you again. Yeah, I was recently, well, as we're recording this, December 3rd, 4th, um, I was recently on your show as well, on the UNX. Yes, you were. Work, and it was so much fun. We could have gone on for hours and hours. So you, your most recent books, you've got two recent books. One is, um, sorry, let me pull this up here, is Fast Movers, High Speed UFOs slash UAPs, as they are currently called, and then also Winged Aliens, a theory that winged cryptid creatures are aliens or interdimensional beings. Fascinating. I have a question. When do you ever sleep? Well, I don't (laughs) sleep very much. I have a tendency to take short naps and stay up late and, you know, maybe get four or five hours of sleep a night. Right, right, right. So, um, well, let's just dive in. Um, now, of course, you're located in Missouri, as am I, uh, live in Missouri, and there has been a recent flap of sightings. Can you talk about that? Missouri has had several uh, UFO flaps over the years with The biggest one being in 2011 to 2012, when we had multiple sightings across the state that boosted our numbers, you know, just incredibly. But Kansas City was the major hotspot at that point. Right. And I have to say, the last time that you were on in episode 79, we talked about your book that was then current. Uh, the Kansas City UFO Flaps, which is an excellent read. Tons of photos as well. Yes, there are a lot of good case files in that book. We were only able to get a few of the the big cases in there. I mean, if I put all, all of them in, it would have been three inches thick and nobody would have bought the book or read it. I but was. yeah, the, the major cases are, are in there. And some of them are actually ongoing cases really? where these witnesses continue to have sightings and continue to have close encounters. And in a few cases, people are actually seeing beings appear to them in their in their houses. And some are having communication back and forth. And this is becoming really a, a lot more common than one might realize. And this is, in recent years, people are waking up, they're actually opening their third eye, their psychic center of the brain. And as you mentioned earlier, I teach remote viewing classes and I am 
I shouldn't be surprised because, you know, I knew this was coming because the earth is, you know, raising vibration and people are becoming more aware and their, their vibration level is, is raising. So they're seeing more. So compared to say 30 years ago, the sighting reports are much different today than they used to be. That used to be they're just seeing lights in the sky or they might see a, a, a craft, rarely a close craft that where they could see detail in it or see beings either in the craft or, or on the ground. That would be extremely rare. But, but now people are seeing, actually seeing craft materialize instead of just simply appearing they're seeing a flash which we believe is a portal opening a lot of other investigators are in line with my way of thinking on this that this this flash is a portal opening and then the craft appear and then the portal flashes again and they disappear so we've got more and more witnesses to that and then we're also having people who are just not afraid anymore. They're not afraid to have an experience or communicate with an interdimensional being. And they're, they appear in their house and they have telepathic communication. And it, it's just, it's awesome. It's just really, really awesome. I mean, I am an experiencer and I've had these experiences most of my life, but to see other people have this as well and it just shows just this major shift going on in the world. Right. So um, what are your thoughts on this about the beings and the ships being around us all the time? And but now we're just kind of waking up to it. So what was there? What was the ships? What were these beings involvement with us during that time when we weren't really opening our third eyes? Well, there. They're here. They're going about their business. It's my opinion that they have always been here and probably longer than human beings have. Mm -hmm. And our consciousness level is now raising to the point where we can see them and interact with them. And it, and the thing is, if they hear, I asked one day, how is this possible? And I got an answer. I actually remote viewed it and I remote remote viewed myself and so i saw myself telepathically send a message out that if there were any benevolent non-human beings in the area to show themselves and so i saw i literally saw a line come out of my head out of the center of my head and go up so i'm standing back remote viewing looking at myself i see this line go up into the sky and lo and behold, a craft is there. They get the message and they turn and they come close to me. So what happened was, and then on their end, so they're looking at me, they see a flash and that's what caught their attention. So what I had done was I went into a higher dimension and they saw that flash and they see me. And so now they know this communication line is open. You know, I like, to, well, I like to tell people when the light is on, all the bugs come. Right. And <laughs> so we have to be careful when we put that light on, when we send out that beacon to set an, an intention of who we want to talk to, which it sounds like you did. If there are any benevolent beings that are around that would like to communicate have them come in and i'm open to seeing them right um yep. so, yeah go ahead well i i mean that was my big breakthrough moment mm. realizing what was going on right you know that we they can lower their vibration to come into our dimension and we can raise our vibration to go into theirs and then so we can have that communication and once you reach a once you have communication with any of the beans you can always have it from there then on you have a connection oh really so you're connected yeah oh wow well, now okay this is kind of an off-the-wall question but once you have that connection open would you be connected to con communicate with 
all the different beings, all the different races from all the different places? Well, however many you wanted to. Oh. Yes, you could send a message out to specific planets or specific types of beings or dimensions because, uh, once again, it, it's my opinion that there are a lot that are here and they, you know, they're on Earth and this is their planet too. That, you know, they, they all of it didn't come from light years away. They, they're they right here and they're right here all the time. But they're, you know, they're zipping in and out at will. And that's one of the things that the, the book, The Fast Movers is about. Yeah. Their vibration is so high that most people don't, notice them, don't see them. They move very, very quickly. It's kind of like, I call it the hummingbird effect. A hummingbird moves around very, very quickly and its wings move so fast you can't see them, but they're there, okay? And if you take a slow motion, if you take a camera, put it on slow motion, then you can see it very easily. So this, this is how I discovered the fast movers. I wanted to see something slow down and it happened to be these white lights that were on a tree in my backyard that I'd seen for years and years, just darting back and forth around the trees. And I wanted to know what they were. And this voice comes, the familiar voice said, why don't you ask them? Well, this was, you know, being a psychic and a remote viewer for years, this was a surprise thought. I, I just hadn't thought of it, you know, that they have a consciousness, th these lights. So I did it. And they immediately responded with a telepathic message telling me that they are the tree sprites. They help, they, they help the tree grow. They tell it when to leaf out, when to grow a new branch, all of this. So I started watching. And over a period of time, I would see in the winter, I would see these branches, these dark branches with a, a light glow around them appear. They, they weren't physical yet, but here is this being created by these sprites. And in the spring, the exact branch is appears and the tree grows to the exact height and all of this. I mean, it was just amazing. So then one day I, I said, would you slow down so I can see you better? Because they move so fast. Right. And Lo and behold, they did. So instead of seeing something for a half a second, I'm seeing it for three or four seconds. So you get a really good look, and then you can see the trail of light behind it. And so what that did was train me to see the fast-moving UFOs. So the first time I did it, I was driving down the street, and I notice these things that I see all the time, just little flits of something dark or light, you know, kind of like it in your peripheral vision, you might see something and you don't even think any more of it. Well, I started thinking about it, that maybe that is something. So I asked them to slow down and oh my gosh, did that open a can wow. of worms. A can of worms. And I'm, I can go out almost any day and see hundreds mm -hmm. of craft. Now, the other day, this I don't know what was going on. This is like four days ago. I was driving to work, and I saw, I mean, thousands and thousands of craft. Dip, wow. You know, just flitting in and out, in and out of dimension. So I contacted my two co-authors of the book, right. Bill Spicer and Wayne Lawrence. And I said, guys, I think something's going on today. Would you take a look at the skies? Now, these... These two gentlemen are very scientific. They have their cameras, and that's how they get pictures of them, get video of them, and then they analyze everything. And But now, both of them took my remote viewing class, and they are also having the telepathic communication. They know when they're there. They go outside. They take pictures, or they actually pull them in. And Bill has become a... a exceptionally adept at this and mm -hmm. calling calling them in and then getting pictures and video but now we have see we started a facebook group called the fast movers and we have people from all over the world now who are learning how to do this technique we call it the quantum ufo communication technique 
or no, quantum UFO observation technique. It's really communication, but you can observe too. So now we've got all these people that are getting the, these fantastic video close up. You can see detail in the craft. And whereas before they used to be a little blurry, but now they're very, very clear. And anybody can can learn how to do this. It, it's just, it's so fun to watch this. And it's kind of like an awakening, you know, amongst the population. That is absolutely amazing. It sounds very much like the CE5 protocol. Yeah, it, it has to be similar. Uh, I, I have not uh, taken that class yet. I plan to because I want to see how similar it is, but it's definitely, it has to be something similar to that where you have a telepathic communication and then they appear. No, oh, absolutely. Well, and the part where you're talking about how we're becoming just more used to the concept and when we become more used to the concept, then we're more open to it. Um, I'm wondering if recent news, like the, the report that came out, I think it was last year, about, yeah, UFOs are real. We don't know what they are, but they are real. Yeah. And then what the Israeli government had put out as well. Um, right. I wonder if that is part of a kind of a more broad disclosure. Do you think we'll ever have a broader disclosure? I doubt it. I, I you know, of course, they know much more than they're saying, and there's a lot more evidence than, than they're putting out. But this is just a, a you know a little bit of a teaser, and but for them to actually say, "Hey, we don't know what that is," that's big that's for our big. government. That's huge, and so you know, of course we're all saying in the UFO community, "I told you so" to a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're waking up. I mean, I have friends and family that really always thought I was a little bit cuckoo uh, that this you know, is probably not real. And then they, they watch the news and say, oh my gosh, if the Pentagon says it, it must be true. Mm -hmm. So I would expect some more things like this to come out in the future where they're showing some video taken by Navy pilots or whatever. And just keep kind of keeping that going. But that does help. That does help. I think one of the biggest factors in being able to see these interdimensional beings and their crap is fear is. And so as soon as you get rid of that, your vibration level changes. It, it, fear drops your vibration level and then, and then calmness and peace raises it, of course. Oh. And that's where you have the interaction happen. Wow. wow. The people who are extremely left brain, I will, uh, you know, I'll say this too. If you're too analytical, if you're unbalanced, the brain really needs to be balanced both sides, using both sides of the brain to do this, okay? You have to be analytical and you have to be creative and, and have both sides of the brain open. But if you are extremely uh, left brain, you're not going to see anything ever. It just does not exist. And so therefore, in their world, that doesn't exist. So that's where our skeptics are and debunkers and people who just can't deal with the idea that there's actually something else here besides us. Yeah, that's a Yeah, yeah. And I know people who are saying, well, that wouldn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. How can there be life on other planets? We haven't seen it. We haven't found it. So how that how can this be? And then, of course, others who say, how can there not be? How can we be the only ones? Right, right. And and they're here. You just don't see them yet. <laughs> okay, so who are these beings? And what makes them interesting? Oh, they are all different levels of vibration and awareness. Mm -hmm. So everything from just above our dimension going into fifth dimension up to at least 12 dimensions. Mm -hmm. And that, and each one is a, is a jump in vibration. So there's a learning. So just think of it as a stair step ladder approach. And, but they, but in order for you to meet them and, and to communicate with them, you master one level, then you can move into the next. Okay. 
et cetera, et cetera. But they also have the ability to pop in and give you a little boost of encouragement or some advice. And so in that way, you know, I've had several experiences like that where something really, really awesome has just appeared. And I'll, I'll tell you about one event. I was meditating. This is a couple of years ago in my front living room of my house, which is the highest energy place in, in the house and where most of the communication happens in that location. So I was meditating and something said, open your eyes, open your eyes. And every time that happens, there's something really, really great is going to happen. So I did. And I looked over to my right. I just felt this pull to look over to my right across the room. And here are these beams of light coming down from the ceiling. And then these seven women materialize. They're all wearing like Celtic style dress. Each is a different colored dress, different color hair. And and they're in order to age. And the second one had blonde, long hair. And she said, we are the seven sisters of the Pleiades. And I, oh my I said, what? <laughs> I thought that was a myth. Right. I, you know, you heard, hear the myths about it and how right. they, you know, visited the, um, mm, Black Hills and the Native Americans there talk talk about this and right. and they said no we are we're real we're a real consciousness and we occasionally have visited the earth and they they wanted to visit me because at that moment in my meditation I had reached a certain level of vibration and consciousness and awareness. And I felt this, I felt this connection to everything in the universe in this meditation. And they, they got that. Mm -hmm. They received that message and they appeared. Wow. And it was the second to the oldest who was the leader of the group and who was the spokesperson for the group. And they told me a few interesting things. And then and they and they all oh, they also told me that they spent some time in ancient Celtic Ireland, which was a which was a time for them, and that the people still knew they still remembered it. They knew about their visits there. So, but they had been to several places around the planet and communicated with Native Americans on numerous occasions, and then they were gone. And they said we. We won't appear again, but you can telepathically contact us anytime you want. I was just oh, absolutely wow. floored by that experience. Sure. Oh, my gosh. And so are all of these beings beneficial to us? Not, not, not all of them. Right. I would say there are some people who have had some negative experiences, such as with some of the reptilians, and not all of them are negative, but some of them are known to be negative. I have had, for my part, I have had very positive experiences except one. Well, let me take that back too. The first one was when I saw a reptilian actually step out of a person and stand there laughing at me, mocking and mocking me, saying there's nothing you can do, I'm in control. And it, and it popped back into that person. Now, mm -hmm. these are very difficult beings to work with and you don't want to get their attention. You don't want to make them mad. Right. So um, that was the one. The other one was a little more bizarre. There was a convention, a UFO convention in Piedmont, Missouri, where in 1973, 74, there was a huge UFO flap with over 500 sightings and was covered by National News, Walter Cronkite, the newspapers everywhere. It, it just a, a huge case. And then entire area that was seen UFOs and these balls of light. Dr. Harley Rutledge uh, 
studied this for years with his uh, graduate students from the college. And, you know, his records, they were seeing things almost on a nightly basis that they couldn't explain. Oh, my goodness. And so, anyway, I was asked to be the keynote speaker at this event. My husband couldn't go at the last minute. I took a, another investigator with me. He said, yeah, I'll, I'll go. And this gal had, she was putting people up in her house. And uh, only one room was taken. She had two more free, so... I said, yeah, I'll go, but I don't want to go myself because it's a six-hour drive. And uh, so she said, yeah, bring him along and we can do this. So we had some very strange events happen. On our way down, we were actually abducted and had missing time of two hours. Oh, my. But that was a good experience because I remote viewed it later. Well, I actually was regressed to find out what happened. But I do know we... We were two hours late and we had no idea why. Then on the day we were leaving, a terrible rainstorm hit and we couldn't leave. I mean, it was just buckets of rain we, and then you couldn't even see him to drive. So we stayed an extra night and I had a very bad feeling about it. I did not want to spend an extra night there, but we did anyway because we could drive. and. So that evening, I went in, laid down in my bed, and I heard this crack above my head, like glass breaking. And you may have heard of some other people. I didn't know at the time, but I found out later that some people hear that glass break when a portal is opening. Yeah. And there's ET et experience is going to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. well, I didn't know it at the time, but I I. My instinct would normally be to get up and find out what is causing that noise. But no, I went to sleep. I just turned around and went back to sleep. So we get up in the morning, head out, and the other investigator says, pull over for a minute, I wanna show you something. We pull over, he pulls his pants leg up, and here is a quarter-sized hole in his ankle. And I mean, it's an open wound. Oh, it wasn't even I mean, it was horrible looking. And I couldn't tell if it was a burn or what it was, but it was awful. We get home eventually. We got lost on the way home, which is we got lost on the way there. We got lost on the way home. Don't know why. Wow. Well, I'm watching TV and I see a documentary film of this woman who has an injury after she was abducted and it looked this exact same size and it had a little notch out of, out of it, just like this other guy had, wow. just like my investigator, exactly the same. I said, what the heck is going on? I, so I knew we were abducted and I, so I had an, another remote um, a regression session mm -hmm. done and I remote viewed it, so I got more information. Did you know that Radiate Wellness is more than just a podcast? That's right. We're also a comprehensive holistic wellness practice. Find out about our services, practitioners, and upcoming events at radiatewellnesscommunity.com. While you're there, visit our podcast page to read more about our great guests and even donate to the podcast. If you like our podcast, you can help in other ways as well, like subscribe or follow us wherever you're listening right now. Tell a friend, a family member, or a coworker about the great content you find here. And if you wouldn't mind, please give us a thumbs up, a five-star rating, or a positive review. Sounds like a small thing, but it really helps. You might like to know about our Facebook communities while we're at it. We have a free community, the Radiate Wellness Community, on Facebook for news and great free content. Our subscribers group is Radiate U, as in the letter U, but also, well, you. There you'll find curated replays of past classes 
guest interviews, and more. And now, back to our podcast and back to our guest. I was on a craft. There were three beans to my left, one to my right. The one on my right was taller, and he was obviously in charge of the situation. These three guys, I don't know where the other investigator is. These three guys are coming at me with needles and equipment, and I'm not very happy about that. Then I hear the other investigator from down the hall yell out. Oh, my goodness. So I looked at this bean. He was pretty tall, but he was definitely not human. Okay. And I telepathically sent him a message. Well, first I went out and I looked on the ship. I remote viewed the ship. And I found the control room. Then I then I sent a message to him telepathically, and I said, "If you don't let us go right now, I'm going to take over this ship and crash it." What I was going to do was send my astral body in there and do it. He looked at me, and he was scanning me to see if I could do it. Mm-hmm. And he turns to the other people in the room, and he says, "Let them go." Oh, my goodness. So what happened was they did let us go. The reason that there was an open wound in the investigator's leg is because they hadn't finished working on it and closed it up. Oh, I see. Because I cut it off. Oh. But I did not remember that situation until later, until I was regressed, and then I remote viewed it to see. Oh, my goodness. Um. So what type of beings were these? The small ones were typical grays. They didn't have gigantic, they didn't, they had big craniums, no hair, one piece suits, large eyes, but not gigantic eyes like you usually see, just a little bit bigger. The taller one was a tan color. He was a humanoid. He had on a, a one piece suit. But he was he wasn't human. He had more of a stranger looking face and with wrinkles, lots of wrinkles on it. Oh interesting. Yeah. Clothing? A one piece suit. Just one piece suit. And it wasn't it wasn't gray like the others. I can't remember what the color was, but it, it was a dark color. And he had some insignia on and uh and again no hair. But I knew that he, he was in charge of the situation. Oh, my goodness. Now, have you ever yourself or this other investigator scanned yourself for implants or anything like that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Have you found any? Yes. Yes. Um, In fact, I had an implant removed uh, in 1987. Wow. And that whole thing was a was a bizarre situation. Something I could feel something out of coming out of my navel. And it was painful. It was like pointy and poking through my skin. And I went to a surgeon because I thought it was a hernia. Right. And he he said, yeah, it has to be a hernia. I don't know what else it could be. And that's really odd. So he did surgery the next day because Mm -hmm. of how much pain I was in. And then I woke up and it was supposed to be outpatient. He said, the little teeny tiny scar and... It'll be outpatient and you'll be out of here in a few hours. Just said, okay. So my husband went home. I said, I'd call him when I was ready to go. I wake up in a room, in a private room. Oh my goodness. The intern comes in. She's and she says, How are we doing here? And she lifts up the bandage, and blood mixed with water started squirting out of it. And I mean just squirting out the side she said oh my god she hold this down so she said hold this ad down real hard (laughs) oh my goodness let me go get the the surgeon i'm like what is going on here so i'm holding this now get this the phone rings it's my husband he says are you ready to come home i said no hang on just a minute i'm not ready to go yet i've got a problem and they've got to sew me back up then this man walks in the door real tall he has on a a kind of a yellow light shirt and tan pants and gray hair he says hi i'm john paul i'm with unity 
how are you doing? So I tell my husband, hang on. I put the phone down on my shoulder. I said, well, I'm not doing too great. Uh, they're they're going to sew me back up again. I'm not looking forward to this. He says, okay, well, let's just say a little prayer. Said, okay, you know, I don't, this guy, I don't know from Adam, right? Right. So he takes my hand. He says a little prayer. He says, oh, we're good. So he walks out the door. The surgeon comes in with the intern. It lift the, the pad up. It is healed shut. No. There is it is healed shut. And he looks up at her and he goes, what's going on here? Because he's mad. And the intern says, look, the whole bed and the floor was soaked with blood. Oh. And he's like, what the heck? And so right then he had this like weird look on his face. And I knew something was wrong. And I said, by the way, because at that point, I didn't know what a hernia was. I thought it was something coming out, right? I didn't right. know you fix it, and push it back in. No, I thought he was taking something out. I said, did you save that for me? He says, oh, no, I forgot. I threw it away. And he leaves. I never see him again. Oh, the story gets stranger. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I'm in the hospital for three days. Oh, my goodness. With a scar that's three inches long. Over three inches long. I'm like, what's going on here? The only person I see the whole time is the intern. It's not even, no nurses come in. Really? Nobody bring my food. She brings me my food. And, I, and by the third day, I was like, I got to get the heck out of here. So they let me go, discharged me. I didn't say a word. I didn't act like I thought anything was out of order. Went home with him. The next day, these people stopped by our house. Now, we were in a new house. They were old friends of ours, and we hadn't told anybody where we'd moved yet. But they saw his Carmen Ghia in the driveway, and they recognized it. So they stopped to talk. Came in the house, sat down and chatted, told her what was going on. And, uh, and I said, you know, I'd like to get a hold of this John Paul from Unity to thank him for what he did. And she says, okay, well, let me see if I can find out anything about him. She goes back, calls me up the next day, says, are you sitting down? I said, yeah, what's up? She goes, well, there was a John Paul. He was a visiting minister with Unity who visited uh, the hospital that you were in, except he's been dead for three years. Oh, my goodness. Oh, so my I'm like, goodness. Oh, and I thought this whole time, I yeah. thought it, that it was a ghost. I thought a ghost came in to talk to me. No, it wasn't. I find out years later that this mantis being who was introduced to me by my dead, by my deceased grandfather as one of the visitors that I'm going to be encountering, 12 visitors, he said over a period of time is what is going to come to me. This is all set up in advance. Mm -hmm. He sits on a council of 13 that, that does this. Right. So this mantis being was introduced to me in 2002. And he's been with me ever since. Well, it turns out he's been with me through multiple, multiple lifetimes. And he is kind of in charge of what I'm made aware of at certain points and things kind of gateways that open and fog that lifts and learning new things. And I, you know, I get, I get a new thing every year. Some, some new talent ability comes in. Right. And he, he's like in charge of that. And he showed me a lifetime uh, where that, that occurred. Um, and when I was a native American in about the year 1100, but anyway, I, did a meditation contact with him. And he just wants me to call him Mantis. He said that was him. He did it. Oh my God. He okay. came in now, as John Paul from Unity. Yes, he became. Now, the reason is because he's seven feet tall. John Paul was very tall, maybe six, eight. Oh my goodness. Okay. I, I said, why did you take on that form? He says, well, could you imagine a seven foot tall mantis walking down the hospital corridor? I said, oh, 
He said, I had to take on a form that nobody would question. Right. I mean, the whole, and the whole thing is bizarre. Well, it turned out that what was taken out of me was an implant. I remote viewed it later. Mm-hmm. I saw the doctor chasing this thing around. And so that's why he had to keep opening my, me up to, oh my to chase it. They, they will move. It had little legs on it. It was moving away, moving away. He finally grabs it, puts it in a gauze pad and puts it in a plastic bag. Then he left the operating room and left the intern to sew me up. And that's why the stitches didn't work right. Oh. She, she didn't do it right. And that's why I was bleeding later. Well, then I see him put it in his coat pocket, make a phone call. A man comes. He hands my whole file to this man dressed in a suit and this uh, implant that was in the plastic bag. Oh my God. And the guy leaves. So he was, he was military or some agency from some agency. Wow. So what I tell people now is, if you find an implant in your body for whatever means, don't take it out it, unless you have to, unless it's painful. Um, I would leave it alone because what that has done, and I've talked to hundreds of people since who have had implants, and I'm working with several people on cases for years that have them. If you take it out, they come back and they put two more in its place. Okay. Okay. And it, this is not only ET doing it, it's our military does it too. The thing is, they may not be something bad. They may not just be tracking devices because believe it or not, I've been told by some ETs that they can track us anytime because they know our vibration. Right. They know once they have a, a line on you, that's it. They don't need it for tracking. It is actually implants that are put in there to help us mm-hmm. to assist us in, in fighting disease or help um, open our mind to certain possibilities, open our minds to learning new things and science, math, whatever, things like that. Mm-hmm. So they're probably mostly good is, mm-hmm. is my opinion on that. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, I would like to kind of shift a little bit now to talk about these winged aliens. I yeah. know there have been some sightings here in Missouri and around the world. What can you tell us about these sightings, about winged aliens? The Mothman, for example. What do we need to know? Yeah. Believe it or not, we have a Mothman in Kansas City. <sighs> at least one. At least, if, if not more. This really caught my attention in 2011. When a local person who had had multiple UFO sightings Mm -hmm. contacted me and reported seeing a winged creature. Wow. And so this particular person has had multiple sightings of it in different forms. At one time, on the ground with wings bent and moving around, but the other times in the air. One time... He, he was walking down the street and there were no clouds in the sky except one that was very low and very close to his apartment complex. And he thought that that was very odd. So he stopped to look at it. Now, he's a he's a he's had experiences his entire life. So he's got his spidey sense on, you know, like those of us who have had experiences, you know, if something's around. Right. And you right. and you know where to look. So right. he looks in that direction sees this cloud he sees this winged humanoid oh my gosh come down out of the cloud with huge huge bat-like wings and stare at him just stare at him and and you know and just flap its wings very slowly not fast slowly and then it goes back up into the cloud. Well, all this time he's trying to grab for his phone to get his video and he gets the thing up and the, and the thing is already in the cloud. He stood there for like 10 or 15 more minutes waiting for it to come back out and it never did. So that was his first real sighting of the creature. Since then, he's had multiple sightings. But in the meantime, then I'm suddenly taking these reports of giant birds right. and uh, 
even as big as a Thunderbird oh, enveloping wow. an entire car with its wings wow. from front to back that blacked out the light. Wow. Oh, yeah, this is this is huge. Then I had my own sighting of what can only be described as a Thunderbird. Sure. I mean, 25, 30 foot wingspan in the trees, but it was just sitting there in the trees with its wings spread out. And then something caught my attention and I looked in the tree near me, closer to me, and there's these three creatures there that look like little tiny pterodactyls. I have pterodactyls. Oh, Oh. I've got a lot of those too. Wow. Those are in the book. And I see these three things. I'm like, what is that? And then I look back over at the tree that that big um, Thunderbird is gone. It's just gone. There were no wing flap, no trees rustling or leaves or anything like that. So that's where I realized that these are interdimensional beings. It had to just phase out uh, into another dimension. So um, we have this particular person in Kansas City who's had multiple sightings wow. of a wing creature. And, he, and it even has approached him while he's driving on a highway and oh, came wow. towards him, staring him down no. while it's flying in the air. Wow. And the other the unique thing about the Mothman sightings mm-hmm. is that everybody who's seen them uh, usually reports that they have trouble keeping their heavy body up with their wings, that they're, it's difficult for them, it, at least near the ground. Mm-hmm. When they're near the ground, okay. that they have it's it's very laborious uh, movement with their wings to keep up, to keep uh, in flight. Right. But the other thing is, which is odd, on several of these reports, they do have the ability to just close their wings in and drop to the ground and stand, and be just like a man standing there, yeah. or in the reverse, not flap their wings at all. And, and fly straight up, just go straight up, and they're gone. Or they, they go into a tree or something like that. So these are definitely not anything normal. They're, they're cryptid because we don't understand what they are. Right. Probably interdimensional beings, including the pterodactyls, because I've taken so many sightings now, I can't believe it. Uh, even my brother saw two at oh once. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, in, in flying right over Independence. Uh, they've seen them in uh, outside of St. Louis, mm-hmm. um, in uh, Nevada, state of Nevada. I've got reports from all over. Kansas has several. Wow. They're all around water sources, though, around the Missouri River, around lakes, things like that. And the Mothman sightings have also been around water. So one thing I noticed while I was doing research for the book, and there are other things, anything wing creature that could possibly be interdimensional is in the book, including fairies. Right. Some really, really cool fairy sightings. I got a there. photograph of a fairy one time. I was so excited. Really? Yeah, inside my house. I have lots of fairies inside my house. Oh, my gosh. We need to talk. I need to get your picture of my next next book okay. because I, I've got to do, you know, supplement because at... at once you put something out there, then everybody gives you their reports. Right. That's so true. there's a second book, you know. Um, but you may know about all of the sightings, of course, going back to Point Pleasant in the 60s. Right, right, right. The famous Mothman flap. Famous Mothman sightings before the, the uh, Silver Bridge collapse. Right. Okay. But what people don't know is that during the six months before that collapse, they were not only seeing this creature, but also many, many UFO reports. I'd heard that. Yes. And men in black visits. Yes. People were being visited by these strange, pale-faced men wearing sunglasses and suits, always in pairs, visiting people and telling them they didn't see something or, you know, being kind of threatening about things. Mm -hmm. So that would be. We have that. But then in Chicago, as of late, the last few years, there have been, I know, over 120 sightings 
of Mothman or giant winged creatures. Wow. Well, then I've got a map out. Those sightings go all the way down through Illinois, mm-hmm. St. Louis area, across Missouri, across. So we're following the Mississippi River, across the Missouri River, across to Kansas City. And now we have groups of sightings here. So perhaps we have a colony of them here in this area, as well as Chicago. Oh and they followed goodness. the rivers. Right. That's my opinion. Why do they? Why do you think they follow rivers? Well, it's a food source and a water source. They've got a drink, and they and they and they've been seen diving in the water. Oh, and the the pterodactyls oh, have true. been seen definitely been seen diving in the water mm-hmm. and coming out. And UFOs, oh my gosh, <laughs> the evidence is too great that. They have underground, uh, underwater bases. Oh, yes. I've seen this okay. in UHHT sessions. Right. Underwater. They go. Underground. Mm-hmm. And we have a lot of water in, in Missouri. Right. A lot. And, and, and lakes, big lakes. We've got Blue Springs Lake, Lake Jacomo, now 10 miles from here, from right. where I am. Right, right. And well, then the Missouri River. Well, one of the, the gentleman I spoke about earlier, his name's Tony Dane. Doesn't mind if I use his name. He crosses 291 Highway. He's an Uber driver. He goes to the airport using that route. That's where he has seen and felt the Mothman on numerous occasions. So he has this sense that now he knows when it's in the area. Mm -hmm. He can feel its presence. And in fact, it actually, last December, he had an encounter with it while he had a passenger in the car, taking the passenger home. He sensed the creature was around. He dropped the passenger off. They noticed something very strange. They noticed that there were no cars on the highway. Now this is I-35 highway, which is very busy day and night, right? They said there were only a couple of cars on the highway and they commented to it about it to each other, discussing it. Then he drops the guy off. He realizes he has missing time of an hour and a half. Oh, my. Goes to get gas in the car, goes back to the airport, gets out of the gas station, and there's a strange substance all over the top of his vehicle. Oh, my. And, it, I mean, it's a massive, copious amount. Wow. Not on any other part of the vehicle. He said he sensed that the Mothman was right above him right over the vehicle or on the vehicle. But he didn't see it. He just, he sensed it because he's, you know, had this feeling about it. Well, he brought the vehicle to me the very next morning. I got samples of it, sent it off to the MUFON lab. And Lynn Mann took the samples. She immediately found out that it was urine and feces. And it had the pH of a bat. Hmm. So, I mean, the Mothman really should be called Batman because right. it doesn't look anything like a moth. It looks like the wings look like a bat. Right, right. Okay. right. Yeah, so, the, the, at, in, at the original Point Pleasant sightings that flap that Batman, the series had just come out and was very popular, so they didn't want to confuse it. So they came up with Mothman. The, yeah, and actually the media gave it the name. Oh, I see. The public didn't give it the name. The media... Maybe gave it the name Mothman. Okay. Mm-hmm. It really should be called Batman. But anyway, the uh, we we also had DNA testing done, and recently the results came back as a brown bat. Interesting. So there's brown bat DNA in this whatever this substance is. But now copious amounts of it. Copious amounts. So I asked Lynn, how is it possible? that there is so much. And the brown bat has a wingspan of 16 inches, by the way. It's not anything tiny. But for there to be that much on there, she said, well, maybe there was a colony of bats flying overhead. He said, okay, so I do some research on the brown bat. It is, it usually hangs out in wood, wooded areas. Right. 
not in the, I'm not in the suburbs. Right. But even so, how does that explain how there was only this substance on the very, very roof of the vehicle and not on the hood or any, any other part, not the doors, nothing. There was nothing else. Then he brought the car back to me three days later. And I said, you know what? I'm going to try some electronic equipment here. So I got out my tri-field meter, my EMF meter, and my REM pod, which is used in ghost hunting, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it measures seven different frequencies. So, and my compass, my military compass, not the one on my phone. Right. So I approached the car from 10 feet away. Compass is normal. Get closer to the car, it starts starts shifting. I get right to the car, it shifts 120 degrees out. Wow. So I back up, I did it three times, three different parts of the car. So there was something strange going on there. Tri-field meter and the EMF meter went berserk as I approached the car from all different angles. Then I got the REM pod out. I said, well, let me just try this. Now, by this time, he's washed the car off. Right. Mm-hmm. Got right. That, rid of that substance. I put it right in the middle of the top of the car. And in about two seconds, that thing started flashing and all the lights are going off and all the noises, everything, every different measurement that is in that ram pod was going crazy. I have only seen that in two other very haunted houses. And one UFO experiencers house in near St. Louis. I, 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 that's the first time I, I ever did that on a UFO investigation, and it went crazy. So uh, there is something happened, something very, very paranormal happened to this man. And get this, just a few days later. Mm-hmm. No. This was just a few months ago. I was on my back deck. And there's a street light. There's two tr- street lights uh, outside my house on the uh, other side of the street. Mm-hmm. So there's a little bit of light shining in. I see a figure and a wing, one wing out the right side. Yeah. Nothing on the left side. And I see the wing come down and then the thing is gone. So whatever it was, was in front of the light making this really defined outline of a shadow shape of a wing but get this i also had a sense that it was mothman and it was and it was there right near me so i go in the house i call an investigator that i work with often her name is jean walker and uh she's the section director for kansas city mufon she and i go out and do a lot of investigating together I said, Gene, you're not going to believe what just happened. And this was like about 930 at night, 10 o'clock. I told her, she said, you're not going to believe this. But this afternoon at 330, she was driving on I-35 highway. Okay. Just like the other guy was. And she notices this shadow on the road in front of her. But it is a wing that's only going out to the right, and there's no wing on the left. And she's trying to figure out how whatever this thing is, and it had to be huge because it's taking up the whole road. She thought it was a plane at first. Right, with only one wing. And then she's like, well, how did that, how is that plane staying up with only one wing? And then she realized, no, that's a bird because it's a bat like shaped wing. Oh my gosh. The same day in two different locations. Now, this is something else that's that's where Gene and I are very connected because things happen to us at the same time, even if we're not together, that are bizarre. Like one day I woke up with this terrible C-shaped bruise on my foot between my first and second toe. And I mean, massive, horrible looking bruise. It looked like something had been placed on top of my foot and and pressed down in between my two toes, oh. right? They were black and blue. I sent her a picture on my cell phone. She sends me a picture back. Same exact bruise on her foot. Oh my gosh. From the night before. Oh, and neither wow. one of us has a clue how they happen. 
Wow. Now, are these stories in your book, the Winged Aliens book? That one isn't, but all of the others are, are, as well as a lot of other really good stories. Oh, my. I cannot wait to read this. And I do want to plug the book again, which is Winged Aliens, a theory that winged cryptid creatures are aliens or interdimensional beings. Um, now, I do want to touch on the media that you're that you've you've been putting out, the uh, the Oz network and the KUNC and KUNX I'm sorry KUNX yes yeah well the the Oz Interdimensional Communication Institute yeah is uh, something that I started a few months ago uh in January and that is set up so that people can learn how to remote view wow. learn how to open their psychic center and also how to contact interdimensional beings so we're a training institute we also do research Mm -hmm. and in fact i've been doing research for mm, quite some time since the beginning of the year or before with a group of people that i trained in remote viewing and so we have been focusing only on et experiences or ufo sightings by witnesses and the results are absolutely better than I could ever have hoped for. They are extremely accurate. Wow. So this this is fun. This is this is encouraging, and we're going to be doing more in the future. We also have a team of people who want to work with me because I do missing person and homicide cases mm-hmm. for law enforcement. And mm-hmm. if they want to work with me, if they take my course then they can be in that group. And what we do, we don't charge for it. So uh, if, you know, if there's a missing person and law enforcement needs help, they can contact me and just go through my website at margiek.com to contact me. And uh, everything is there explaining how this works. But we don't want any information. I don't want to know a name or anything to start with. Just contact me and say, hey, I've got this issue here. And it's best, uh, or if a family member is missing, the family can contact me. And not only will I work on it, but I have this team that will also work on it. Okay. So we, you know, we compare our notes and then we give, give all of the information to, to either the family member or the detective working on the case. Right, right. So, so that's very exciting. And I want to do a lot more with that. Wonderful. I think there's a lot more to be done with it. And there's, um, and we can learn more about this at oz-ufo.com or at margiek.com. Either one, either one. But oz-ufo.com is uh, the central hub for the Institute. And uh, Oz also puts on conferences. Yeah. So, yeah, we do paranormal conferences and and UFO conferences. They're on, they're on Zoom. They're virtual. Uh-huh. And we, we have great speakers. So we've got another one coming up in March, actually. Oh, that's exciting. In, in 2022. Exciting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the uh, the KUNX yeah. Digital Broadcasting Network is, we launched it October 31st. I have a, a fantastic team that is just unreal. We have 17 shows right now. We have three more that are getting ready to launch. My programming director is Race Hobbs. He's very, very well known in the industry. He is the best programming director and radio voice out there. We've got big name shows like Whitley Strieber, Jimmy Church, Micah Hanks, um, Billy Carson, Nick Hunter. Yeah. Some great. Yeah, Yeah, really good shows. They're all paranormal shows. If it's paranormal, if it's UFOs, um, alien contact, Sasquatch shows, uh, ghost hunting, the most haunted places in in the world, it's going to be there. It's all yeah. the paranormal network. And then we have a magazine to go with it, an yeah. X magazine that's quarterly. And people who sign up uh, can get a free membership. 
at unxnetwork.com. And then they'll also get a newsletter, get a monthly newsletter, and they can join in our chats. And uh, it, it, it's great. We've got more coming, too. We're going to have TV coming in uh, 2022. Oh, how exciting is that? Um, and then what is the general website for the, the um, Digital Broadcasting Network? It's uh, www.unxnetwork.com, unxnetwork.com. Yeah, we'll have all of those uh, links in the show notes. Margie, thank you so much Great. for joining me today. This has been so interesting. I mean, my gosh, we could talk for like a week and not oh, get absolutely. Anything. Right. Not get everything spoken about. Um, but I would r urge everyone to please go read the books. These are The Fast Movers, High Speed UFOs slash UAPs with Margie K, Bill Spicer and Wayne Lawrence, as well as Winged Aliens, a theory that winged cryptid creatures are aliens or interdimensional beings by Margie K and all the other wonderful books and we haven't even talked about the two documentary films that you're working on. I think we're going to have to have you back to talk about these films that are coming up. Okay. Would that be okay? Yeah, that, absolutely. Let that me, let me get fun. a little further along with them, but absolutely. yes. Yeah. Yes. We'll Good schedule time to. to talk about those. Great. Thank you so much for joining me today, Margie. It has been a pleasure. Okay. Thank you, Christy. Good to see you. You too. Radiate Wellness is an international community of holistic and alternative healers dedicated to helping you create spiritual, energetic, and physical well-being. To learn more about our practitioners, services, classes, and events, or to schedule an appointment, visit us at radiatewellnesscommunity.com.